नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल टुडे आई हैव अ वेरी जॉयस एडिटोरियल टू प्रेजेंट टू यू वी आर द फोर्थ नेशन इन द वर्ल्ड टू लैंड इन द मून आफ्टर यूएस अर्स्ट वाइल यूएसएसआर चाइना इंडिया इज द फोर्थ टू लैंड इन मून बिग अचीवमेंट वी आर द फर्स्ट नेशन टू लैंड इन द साउथ पोल ऑफ मून बिगर अचीवमेंट सो ब्रिलियंट अचीवमेंट by india now um, i'm going to spend next 15 minutes with you discussing who should get the credit for this moon landing who all should get the credit of this moon landing that's my topic of the day let's get right into the show so i am going to take you through the journey of isro See, that's important because end of the day, everybody celebrates the flower. Nobody talks about the seed. So let's talk about the seed today and also celebrate the flower. And let's see the journey of Isro. So I'm going to read a lot. So please bear with me on that. And then finally, we have a three minutes chat. Now, um, right from 1947, the Prime Minister of India then, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, saw a lot of potential in rocket science and understood the need for a sound policy on space now what he did is nehru recognized the importance of science and technology for the development of the country so he put a space research under the ambit of department of atomic energy that is dae in 1961 the dae was founded by the then veteran nuclear scientist homi j baba he uh, headed it and he founded it too now baba created indian national committee for space research or as it was then called in cospar that is i n c o s p a r so the first initial name of isro was not isro it was in cospar okay this was set up in february 1962 under the leadership of pandit jawaharlal nehru with another brilliant scientist she took homi baba took another scientist with him a brilliant scientist called vikram sarabhai now vikram sarabhai was made the chairman of in cospar this was the seed to today's isro 1962 chalo let's go further sara bhai organized space research under incospar the chief mandate for incospar was to formulate india's space program the responsibilities of dae related to space research were taken up by the committee this is what like i said incospar was and in cospar committee was so under the leadership of vikram sara bhai this committee started now came a genius into the team and this genius was called dr abdul kalam now kalam was part of the indian national committee of space research like i said in in cospar working under vikram sara bhai now in cospar took the decision to set up tumba equatorial rocket launching station okay this tumba is in is in south of india the tip of south of india okay so under the leadership of vikram sara bhai and now uh, abdul kalam they decided to set up a equatorial rocket launching station called t e r l s that is tumba equatorial rocket launching station theek hai na now let's talk a little more about dr abdul kalam dr abdul kalam put over 10 long years long years of hard work to create india's indigenous satellite launch vehicle which is called slv he spent 10 long years and indian space research organization that is isro came into existence in 1969 now in um, 1969 with a lot of initiative from the then prime minister mrs indira gandhi 
who had a vision of developing har and harnessing space technology in national development while pursuing planetary exploration and space science research, ISRO replaced Incospar in the year 1969. Now coming back to uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam. Abdul Kalam at that point in time had almost been putting in 10 years of very hard service and had developed indigenous SLV. SLV is Space Launch Vehicle and he was attached to India Space Research Organization that is ISRO in 1969. Kalam was transferred to ISRO where he was the project director of India's first satellite launch that is SLV-3 which successfully deployed the Rohini satellite in near Earth orbit in July 1980 making India a member of the exclusive space club. So, Abdul Kalam designed the first indigenous Indian SLV, that is space launch vehicle. And he launched our first satellite called Rohini satellite. And we became in the exclusive club of people, of countries who have launched their satellites in space. So, this is a story. And 1980 was the day when our satellite Rohini went up there and uh, was orbiting the earth. So that was a proud moment. Now let's go further. Now um, from there on we've been developing. Every prime minister, every government, every ISRO head and Abdul Kalam himself has been tirelessly working to make all of this happen. Now let's come to Chandrayaan. This particular Chandrayaan also we need to credit a lot of people. People like the ISRO chairman S. Somanath. People like Mohana Kumar, the mission director. People like P. Veera Muttuval, project director and his entire team of scientists work day in and night to get this happening. You know the big part of this is Chandrayaan was created at a cost of 615 crores only. 615 crores. In fact, if you go to see Russia's Luna 25, which crashed trying to soft land in moon in the South Pole, cost a whopping 1,600 crores. China's shot to the moon was even costlier. The first probe to moon costed them 1,752 crores. Imagine, we put a satellite in 615 crores. This is what S. Somanath, Mohana Kumar and P. Veera Muttuval and his team did. Fabulous, fabulous achievement. When we talk about cost, mind you, we should also talk about the vendors. The vendors who ensured that a vehicle could be made at this cost. 615 crores vehicle that landed in moon, successfully landed in moon, that to the South Pole. So, we also need to talk about the vendors and the vendors are Larsen and Tubro. Larsen and Tubro Aerospace Wing was the key for supplying crucial components for launch vehicle of Chandrayaan 3. Tata Consultancy Engineering Limited, TCE, also engineered unique and indigenously built critical systems and subsystems including the propellant plant, the vehicle assembly building and the mobile launch pedestal which were custom built for the successful launch of the space mission. Also, metal manufacturing company Mishra Dhatu Nigam, which was built, which, which is based in Hyderabad, supplying critical materials such as cobalt base alloys, nickel base alloys, titanium alloys, special steel for various components of the launch. Then we go to Bharat Heavy Electricals, who are responsible for supplying the battery for Chandrayaan 3. We go to MTAR Technologies, which, were, which provided key parts for the Chandrayaan 3 mission, including engine and booster pumps. Then Godrej Aerospace and Ankit Aerospace reportedly produced key engines, thrusters and supplied alloy steel, stainless steel, fasteners respectively. Then we have the Valchand Nagar Industries, which is said to have supplied critical booster segment S200 used in the launch vehicle flex nozzles, control tankage, S200 flex nozzles, hardware, etc. 
So these were the people who also made all of this happen. These were some of the vendors. I have, I have not named all, but some of the vendors that made yesterday's success story happen. Now, when we are talking about ISRO, we cannot forget uh, Nambi Narayan. Nambi Narayan has been an integral part of ISRO. He also went through a lot of turmoils in life uh, because of ISRO. Now, let's talk for a minute. Let's talk about Nambi Narayan. Nambi Narayan was in charge of cryogenic division of at ISRO. If it wasn't for cryogenic, you wouldn't have rockets going up. So, his contribution was very, very important. Nambi Narayan is claimed to have foreseen the need of liquid fuel engine for ISRO's future civilian programs and introducing the technology in India as early as 1970s. Like I told you, if it wasn't for Nambi Narayan, we wouldn't have reached the space. He was accused of selling the same technology, that is uh, uh, engine division, that is this liquid fuel engine. He was accused of selling the same technology to foreign hands. Now, he was later acquitted by CBI court and the Supreme Court in 1998 and he spent close to 50 days in jail along with fellow scientist D. Sashi Kumar and four others. The rocket uh, scientist was fighting a legal battle uh, since 1994, first to clear his name in the case and then for compensation and now for action against the police officer who implicated him. So uh, this was a this was a very touching story. Of course, there are a lot of movies uh, based on this, a lot of, lot of books on this. So, but yeah, I mean, I thought when we are talking about our spaceship going up, we cannot not talk about Nambi Narayan. So this is another great soul, um, a great mind that one should thank when we talk about successful launch of Chandrayaan-3 and successful landing of Chandrayaan-3. Now, uh, of course, of course, how can we forget the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi. See, Narendra Modi has been very enthusiastic about our satellite launches, about our space programs. In fact, if you, if you see figures, uh, Modi government has had 47 ISRO launches. Under Manmohan Singh, there were 24 and under Vajpayee, there were 6. So there was considerable larger number of launches under Modi. So definitely Modi uh, government was seen or Modi government gave a lot of impetus to ISRO and launches. So these are the people, these are the people that we need to thank. These are the seeds that we need to thank when we see the flower of our efforts, that is our satellite landing in the South Pole of Moon yesterday. The most important contribution of this has been from all of you all. All of us. All of us because all this right from 1947 when it was Incospar to today when it became ISRO or 1969 when it was named as ISRO and today's ISRO. I think all through the one factor that stood by all this development were the people of this country, were the taxes they paid. It is the people of this country who stood by, tightened their belts but paid for our growth, paid for that pride of that uh, satellite going up there. Everybody clapped when that satellite was landing there. Some of them didn't know where the next square meal would come from, but they clapped because they knew it was an Indian satellite that's been launched there. So I think the maximum credit of all of this should go to the people of India, the people who tightened their belt, but ensured that our flag was flying high in the moon. So that's the point. The reason I'm doing this editorial. The reason I'm doing this editorial is because, of course, first, I wanted to talk about this. Secondly, you see, what really happens is normally we see the fruit, we praise the fruit, we, we, we celebrate the fruit like I told you before. But one doesn't thank the seed that gave birth to this fruit. Now what is going to happen to a society that forgets to thank the seed that gave birth to a fruit is nobody would want to be a seed. Everybody would like to be seen as a fruit. Because you are only celebrated if you are a fruit. Nobody, people, leaders will stop foresights. They will not do anything that may help India after 50 years, after 100 years. They will not do. They will say, kya fayda? What is the point? Is anybody going to talk to talk about me? The person who is there in 50 years or 100 years, he will get all the credit. 
I will not. Maybe I will be blamed for it. For all you know. And if you have leaders who are going to be working for the moment and not for the future, you will never be able to develop India. So therefore, my effort in today's editorial was to thank all those people, all those people, as much people I could thank, all those people who put tremendous effort, tremendous effort to make uh, uh, ISRO what it is today. Also, a lot of people I have not mentioned, a lot of leaders I have not mentioned, a lot of politicians I have not mentioned, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, P.V. Narasimha Rao, a lot of people I have not mentioned. But all the same, I celebrate all of them today. I thank all of them today for the success story of yesterday's mission, Chandrayaan 3. Till I see you next time. That's tomorrow at 10. Namaskar.